Shot is presented by Botano. The game starts now. Here are your hosts, Brent Wallace, Jason York, and Bobby Ryan. Sanderson. And Bailey. Jake Sanderson. Stood slow. Fires. Scores. Another trip shot from Tim Stutzler. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. It's nice to have you back. Uh, fantastic uh, game yesterday. If you're an Ottawa Senators fan, boys, welcome. It's uh, Brent Wallace alongside Jason York and Bobby Ryan. Coming in hot, presented by Botano. Uh, great to hear Chris Cuthbert's voice. Uh, guys, let's talk a little preseason hockey. And Well, Tim Stutz is not talking preseason hockey anymore. He's ready to roll. He is ready to roll. But it's nice to be back to having games to talk about as opposed to... <laughs> Uh, we'll have a lot more nerd reports in our future, Yorkie, I feel like, but uh, oh. <laughs> that's, that's okay because it's, it means that hockey's back and there's something to chat about. Yeah, it's great. Uh, hockey's back, but I think people need to pump the brakes a little bit here. Like, <laughs> oh, don't know. Don't start right out of that the gate. this morning. Like, just like, just pump the brakes here. Like, it's great. Hockey's back. Lots to be excited about. New ownership. It's fantastic. But let's not dissect game one of a preseason game number one. Sure, we'll talk about some of the nice yes, stories and everything. We're going to talk about it. But nobody's making the team based on one game. And nobody's getting cut. Based. Well, sometimes people get cut based on one <laughs> game. But, you, but usually not. So. Yeah. You oh, usually get a working. second sniff. Oh, I'm <laughs> saying, you know, the, the car hasn't been driven in a little while. You know when you haven't driven the car in a while? The brakes. You're like, Do I need a brake job here? you got to pump them a few times. Just pump it. Get the rust off there a bit. <laughs> Listen, you need to like, cut back on the caffeine. You're too. Let's a little more positive this morning. Uh, we will talk about Michael <laughs> Andlauer a bit later in the show. But can we just? I understand uh, it is preseason. It's game one. It's at home, which means the lineup is always a little tougher to play against when you're the home team. So they had their number one lineup in, or number one line in the show uh, in the game. Sorry, um, but Tim Stutzla. Can, all right, Gavin, just roll the goals. Tim Stutzla looked fantastic in his in his time on the ice last night wouldn't uh Again, are we seeing a new Tim Stutzler between... like another level here no it's preseason and he had 90 points last year so this is what he's supposed to do right. and this is um you know a soft lineup that they played against so nobody is taking away from the fact that those were two unbelievable shots like they were you know, fi fi finding a way to use the screen, excuse me, um, changing the direction of that puck and then hitting your corner, unbelievable. And then the second the second one, uh, which we saw when we came into the show, bar down, another great shot. Um, when you have a 90-point guy and he puts up two great shots in a game, you're not supposed to be surprised. He's going to have a monster year. We knew that. He looks like a monster player. He looks like a player that is becoming the face of the franchise. All those things were expected, but you cannot get too excited about those goals in in a <laughs> in preseason well, game one. I, mean, I couldn't too. be more wrong with you right now. And the reason <laughs> I say that, he's unbelievable. Got, he's supposed to be unbelievable. It's, but it's game one. You Listen, there's been a lot of times when star players have gone on the ice wow. in game one of a preseason and kind of gone through the motions. That's the beauty of having a young team when you, when your yeah. core is really young. Like he's super excited to be back because he had that monster year that Bob just talked about. Now he's back and with so much excitement. The players know all the excitement going around the new ownership and the buzz yeah. and the there's going to be packed buildings this year. So he's jacked and I'm sure DJ came in there and got the boys fired up before the game like guys this is New era, new beginning. Let's go. And he played over. He played over twenty-one minutes last night in a preseason game. By the way, uh, Pitzler was over twenty-one. And yeah. Sanderson, yeah, I think you I, you you brought that up before we get on the show, Wally, and I double checked. He was twenty-seven minutes in a preseason game, and we haven't even mentioned him. Like he looks fantastic out there. They uh, man, he was good. But again, preseason, as Bob said. But hey, your your best players. It's supposed to look easy for them. Um, and, and the fact that they're doing this this well is because they're young. Young guys aren't sore yet. Their bodies don't have aches and pains yet. It's not like the old days when 30-year-old guys didn't feel like playing preseason games. You got a couple guys in their mid-20s that are just fired up, and you can tell. They were yeah. great. Absolutely. Uh, I, listen, as uh, Jack Lavoie says in the chat, looking at Stutzla's shoot, I thought I was looking at Bedard. So there you go. Hey. Okay. Speaking it's of LeJoy, how about I turn on the thing and I'm like, 
there's a Max LeJoie sighting out there. And I'm like, let's get Boucher's there. It's like, <laughs> hey, no, Bob. You, didn't you, Max, you, Max played for that? Marley's last year, didn't he? I think so. Yeah, I know, but first preseason game right on the power play. <laughs> Guess who's running the power play now for <laughs> Toronto? It's Boucher. Hey, just prove proof in the pudding. You only need one guy to like you if you want to survive in the league. Yep. That's so good. That's so good. He's he'll be the first call up in the PP now. Um I always thought I loved Lejoie's Lejoie's game when I played with him. I, he just always gave you the puck at the exact right time. He I he's yeah. small and undersized, but he just always made good simple passes, man. I liked so, playing with him. Hey, so the guy scores a- in the first period of his first game, then he ends up with an assist. I yeah, I think, and I can't remember if it was the game winner or not. I apologize. Um, but what happened? Like, probably a power, probably a power struggle within. I'm just guessing, Bob. You'd know better than me. I'm just gonna take a stab in the dark here. I don't. Bo- yeah. It was obviously Boucher loved him. Probably somebody in management didn't like him, and management won. That's what happens. It's like it's, with with bad teams, but, and, and but he's now been a he's a career they, minor leaguer. Because like, listen, you the difference between you got stars that are stars, then you got that second tier, then there's a bunch of guys. They could probably play in the NHL, but they don't uh, for a lot of different reasons. And number one, it's like you said, I, I joke about this, but it's 100 percent true. You have to have somebody in your corner. Uh, yeah. If you don't, if you yeah. don't at that level of player, you're probably not going to play in the league. Josh Bailey. Right. Yeah, he's, there's no but he's, there's no he's other reason great, he's here. Uh, he's had a great career, though. And, and hey, but do you think he's picking Ottawa if Jack Campuano and DJ Smith aren't here? Of course not. Of course that's not. not. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Not. That's just good. That's just smart business. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Let me get. So hedging. I'm going to get back Little to hedging. other guys. In, okay, hold on. I'm getting back to other guys in this game in a sec. But here's yeah, what okay. I wanted to bring up with Tim Stutzla's two goals in his preseason debut, looking basically like Connor McDavid. Uh, Batano has a. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna keep it on today. I feel good about the team. So who do I? They look uh, great. Batano has out leading scores for each division. And in Ottawa, it breaks down as Austin Matthews is a favorite, followed by David Pasternak, Tage Thompson, Braden Point, and then Tim Stutz at in fifth at plus twenty nine hundred. Who do you think, gentlemen, will end up leading the Atlantic Division in goals? Man, that's a tasty bet. It's um, it's, it's really me. hard for me to go off of those top two. I think David Pasternak will come back down a little bit because Bergeron's not there to just move the puck up the ice as well. Matthews is hard to bet against, but I if I'm taking a flyer this year, yeah, it's gonna be Tage Thompson. Mm. That's gonna be my guy. I think. Yeah, yeah, I think he had 47 last year. Yeah, yeah, I think he's the guy, and I. I would move Stutzla ahead a point in that conversation for myself, but that's, you know, those, t- those top three are mm-hmm. I mean, not that Timmy's a bone, not a bona fide goal scorer, but those guys don't do much else, but score goals. Timmy's a little more well-rounded yeah. than a lot of those guys for me. So um, yeah. Yeah. Tage is unbelievable. Bob, some of the highlight goals he had last year with that reach. Dude, the like patience his. is ridiculous, isn't it too? It's he's so good. If I was going to throw some Cash down. You know, it was a great value bet right there at number seven, like plus four, my uh, four, four nine hundred. Because here's going to be with I think Ottawa is going to score a ton of goals this year. It's a, it's a long shot. I I would I'd go with Brady Kachuk. I think he's going to score a ton of goals like you saw last night in front of the net in that five foot radius. And as much as that power play has a bunch of different options right now, really the only clear cut option besides Stutzla is uh, Brady Kachuk in front of the net. Like I, I think he's going to score a lot of power play goals because you're going to have so much talent on your flanks. Um, so I like that bet. I'm not saying he's going to do it, but if I was going to like throw some money down, that's, that's, I like those odds. Uh, can you put the board back up, please, Gavin? I just, uh, Yorkie, I don't know if you can see who's in uh, tied with uh, uh, Brady Kachuk. Oh, the cat. We got a cat. He just threw that in there, right? <laughs> just had to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, I, the cat i can tell you right yeah. now the cat 
is in the perfect spot for success. Not going to make the playoffs. He's now going to be back <laughs> playing a minute and 50 of every power play. He's going to get two goals in your six, in your six, four loss. And he's going to be, he's going to be the guy. It's, it's awesome. Be a happy clam, man. Eh? Right, he's gonna be happy, eh, Bob? He's gonna get his goals and two goals, he'll, minus one power play he'll be, goal. He'll be on the ticket for game two of the season. Hey, here's the cat. There he is. <laughs> the uh, I, I like Tate Thompson for you, Bob. I think uh, with Buffalo being younger, but yeah, I would I would put my money on Tim Stutzla if I had to place a bet yeah. just on straight cash. I'm taking Tim Stutzla plus yeah. twenty nine hundred. I it, think. Uh, if you, he has if that you're ability in those top four, you can't go wrong. I mean, they're all good picks. Like, yeah, <laughs> yep. I watched him last night. He looked bored for a little bit. He had the puck once, and he's like, I'm gonna <laughs> throw it behind my back here. Try this, try that. Like, he just, he's, he's so talented. Like, yeah. I, I sh- he could do it for sure, but for, for, for sure, Wally. I, yeah. I see him, I see his assist total going up this year. I think that assist total is going to go up because there's so many. We had Tarasenko. You got Norris back, who's also a shooter. You got Brady, who's also a goal. There, there's only so many goals to go around, and yeah. if I and if Ottawa is going to be a really good team, and I still I stand by this. I've said it for a long time. They're going to be a playoff team. I think the goal scoring is going to be more spread out this year. That's my. Not that's that it a, was. Not that it's it was such a good problem year. to have, but I think right? when you have such a good problem, like you said, when you have when you have five guys that can roll off thirty. It's not, it's not a bad thing, right? So if you have a bunch of guys that are all making eight million dollars and they all score thirty-five goals, but you make the playoffs, you're all happy. Everybody's happy. Bob, you you told me this too. Like Drake Ballison was banged up last year. From all accounts, I heard he's healthy now, coming into camp hundred percent. There's there's a guy like we showed some highlights of him last night with that pole, pole yeah. and the dragon release shot he has when he used yeah. the D. Like it's not out of the question that he can get thirty either. Like oh like, no. So, no, no. Not, not at all. Question. No, nope. no. If he's working that other flank and coming down downhill on that side, he's. I mean, he can shoot the pill, and he can and he can change the direction with the best of them. I mean, and he's he's making full. He's he's on a great value deal. He just he just becomes the forgotten guy because he's not making eight sometimes. But uh, he's <laughs> an extremely important part of that offense. Well, if you look, if you look at their power play the way it's set up, Bob. The one constant is you're going to have, I'll talk about this later, either Sanderson or Shabbat on the top. You're going to have Sutzel on that one flank. You're going to have Brady in the top. And then you're going to have over on the other side, probably Drew Norris or Tanker Sanko. But you need a right-hand shot in the middle, correct? Because Brady's a left stick. You have to have a right in the middle. Yes. So you really, who's your only option? It's Drake. Drake's got to be the bumper, right? And he can shoot, man. He can take he can take that one timer from Brady. He can take that one timer from a lefty. Um, he he's not, yeah, he can absolutely score. And he and he's pretty I mean, we're gonna talk about the plus minus, and I'm not going into it, but he can he can, <laughs> he can create plays that other guys that are in that offense can't. He can create yeah. plays by dragging guys behind them, coming into the hard little circle areas around the net. So um, yeah, absolutely another guy that can rattle 30 off. We will see uh, Tarasenko and Drake Batherson in the lineup tonight as they are in Toronto. Jacob Chikrin in the lineup as well with Thomas Shabbat. Um, all right, so a couple other players. Well, you know what, York, you brought it up. I was going to say who stood out to you, but let's start with uh, Jake Sanderson, who mm. I know he hasn't played 82 games. I know it's, well, 77 games. He, I don't want to get too – and I'm with you, Bob. I don't want to get too excited about certain – but he just looks – like a yeah. full grown man on the ice right now at five years into this. Like, so do you know I, what I he's just, improved at Wally? And I want, yeah. this is what really caught my eye last night. And again, more time and space than usual in, in, in a, a regular season game. He got better at walking the line. Like he explodes, he explodes, he explodes yeah. across the ice so fast. The forward coming out has no opportunity to angle him to keep him over on the side. So, this is what makes a power play go. It's with the defenseman can establish the middle of the ice right away. Once yep. you do that, everything opens up. And I was watching him last night. I'm like, holy cow. Like, this guy obviously worked on that over the summer, getting to the middle. But he does it in a way where he's in a position to shoot it, pass it either way while moving. 
Like he yeah. makes it look, you know, who used to, I'm not going to compare him because they're not the same player. Remember the way Eric Carlson used to walk the middle. Like mm-hmm. he used to do it in that position where no fear, it? no fear, but Sanderson, he improved on that big time. And I guarantee he is working. They all have skills coaches now. So he's working on that particular move for sure. Probably every single time he touched the ice, but they're going to have a tough time keeping him off. Uh, the number one power play, man. <laughs> I, I do agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I agree with what you said about the way you walked the line. The only thing I'd, I'd like to see a little more deception in the way he distributes yeah. up there. You know how you know how shabby he's always got a shoulder yeah. turn and then comes back the other way with it. I'd like to see that out of Jake. But ultimately, if you gain the middle of the ice and you can establish the fact that you can go right down the lane with a shot, which he looks like he can do at all times, you make that you make that center move into the or excuse me, you make that top penalty killer move into the middle that's all well and good but i'd like to see a little deception because like that half a that half a foot or half a second that you buy a flank guy that's coming down um is everything that's how drew is able to make that pass into the middle on the brady goal because yeah. you know he was able to he was able to get that extra half second so i'd like to see that but that being said, and, and then I'd like to see him knock on DJ's door and be like, I don't need to play 27 minutes tomorrow <laughs> in a preseason game. Um, hey. I, I'm good with 20, and I'm pretty damn good. Um, so I'd like to see that. I just I hate when guys that many minutes because it just opens up so many uh, risks for injury in games like that yes. where games get sloppy towards the end in preseason and guys are running around. It's like you, you're just going to, you're going to rip a groin. You're going to, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're going to take a shitty hit because everybody's tired from not playing all summer. So Toronto's uh, so soft. Toronto's so soft. There's true. No, there's no, there's no worry of getting hit out there. True. Like, um, but, but, but he looks like clear, a man. He, he looks like a five year vet. Yeah. And just to add uh, for all the people that love to shit on Shabbat, he already walks the line as good as anybody in the league. So just to yep. be clear, like he's a guy that, can can do that. I just think they got lots of options now. The way how much Sanderson improved, but Shabbat, man, he's still a great power play player. So yeah. takes way too much flack in this town. So here's way what's going to happen: Thomas Shabbat's going to have two power play assists tonight and look great <laughs> on the power play. And everybody's going to so. be like, "I told you, he should be on the first power play unit." Wow. <laughs> what? Ha- all, here's all, what. All, it, all this, does Thomas Shabbat stuff, come off the top power play unit? Who right now? That's going to play out. Yeah, I, they're gonna have to play two units right now, and they're right. That's the only thing. Everybody says it's a good problem, but they're gonna have to do what they did last year to start the season because there's too many. There's you got a lot of first power play guys on this team. So to me, to me, and what I, I think, what other people that are you know putting units together in their head have to think about is how badly does unit one and unit two mix up lines one and two for rolling back after a power play. Cause you're generally going to roll your third line. You're not really borrowing guys from your third or fourth line. So that's generally who's going to go out right after a, a PK or a PP anyway. But if you got guys that played a minute and 25 seconds that come off second, those guys need a minute, right? You, so you have to see sure. how poorly those lines um, or not, not important. How, how much those lines get affected by power play be able to roll right back out so that that is something that coaches will look at um Mm -hmm. but we'll see i i would start the way that you finished last year you can't take chabby off the first unless he doesn't earn it um because that unit was just too good last year you have to leave him to me anyway yeah yeah well i'm trying to think with that unit last year to was on unit one last year last night right last year to finish the year right bob yeah, so you just roll somebody in his spot and go from there. And if that doesn't work, then you start to adjust. But you got four out of the five guys back. You have to you have to let them yeah. build. They had well yeah. it looks like it looks like Stutzla. So Debrinkett was on his offside, which Stutzla will go on his strong side. You'll yeah. have Brady in front of the net, and then they'll try to figure it. I would think it's gonna be Bathus in the middle, and it's just the question is who's on that other flank is yeah. is to me what they're gonna do. But it's gotta be Josh, no? Well, it's the thing is, like they, they probably want to get Tarasenko going right away. But look at Giroux. like Giroux, Giroux's, I know, like, he's, like so, he's so good on that. <laughs> like you could a, a lot of great power plays. You have two guys on their strong sides, and they come in. They come in as flank guys. You can shoot it, and then you can put it to the middle. There's a lot of options. Like the one timer is great when it works, but sometimes guys on their strong sides. 
I think I remember you, Bob. You used to play your strong side on that right side, right? Yeah. Like, there's, there's a lot of there's a guys love that because you have so many options with the puck, um, especially if you're a good shooter. Yeah. See, I hated playing my strong side. Um, I just outside of outside of Boucher, nobody would listen to me to put me on my one timer side, and it wasn't even for the one timer. It was for I felt more comfortable coming down the hill with my stick in the middle because then you could just pivot out. You could take two steps, pivot out, get it back to the point. Uh, mm -hmm. I felt better taking guys one-on-one -on -one coming at me with stick towards the blue line as opposed to stick downhill. Um, and I think when I was, yeah, when I, when I personally was at my best on the power play, I played over there with, you know, Stoner played on his strong side. We had Dutchie in front for the minute and some other guys. And then Chabby and I could work the one-timer connection, which led to some goals. So um, I personally didn't like the strong side. Most guys do. Most guys prefer it. And I think that if Giroud does play that, that option to go down the Kachuk and in is more of a threat down the Kachuk into Batherson is more of a threat. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I could see that being the start. Yes. Yeah. Cause the stick for people that are trying to visualize it. Cause when you're on your, when you're on your one time or sticks in the middle, so you have a, the passing lanes, not always there to go down to that pop out guy, which will be Kachuk. Yep. Yeah. And I, I just preferred it that way. Uh, mm -hmm. Quick question before we move on. Cause you brought up Dutchie, you played with them. I'm just curious. People have their thoughts about Darren, uh, Darren addition. We yeah. call him Dutchie. Uh, Matt Duchesne. <laughs> uh, the question I have for you, is he the best stick handler, like in tight, the best set of hands? That's it. He could get himself out of any trouble, it seemed to be. Uh, gosh, if you asked me to list 10 skills, I don't think I would have picked that one. Really, eh? Yeah. Watching him dangle guys like below the goal line was, he was just so good at it. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's got great hands and he's, and, um, yeah, and, and he's very good and tight around the net. So he's, you know, thinking about it, I think he's up there. Um, people forget Corey Perry. Um, very good in there and not as flashy. But Dutch, yeah, Dutchie's up there, but yeah, that's not a skill that I would I would pick yeah, out okay. from him. Yeah, I thought he was better at putting guys on his shoulder and stopping and getting around them, but, you know, kind of bullishly. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, moving on quickly because we got too much to talk about today in the Nerd Report. Um, mm hmm is Anton Forsberg back in the net? And by the way, I happen to like the full game for goalies. I, I never too. quite understood the split to half and half. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, he, he just looked really solid. And remember, uh, we said early on in the summer that the players were saying how good he looked in camp or just on the ice and in scrimmages and whatnot. But he, he doesn't show any sign of rust whatsoever. And yes, Bobby, I know it's game one of a preseason. I just know he made some stops. <laughs> yeah goalies you can evaluate a little differently i mean against you know against shooters it all it all tracks the same for goalies i like that there wasn't any real effort or noticeable strain i guess would be the word yeah. um and i thought he was good his angles looked good i thought he he made the first say i yeah he he looked good he looked mm -hmm. good yeah. in game one of preseason yeah, so, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thirty-six oh, saves. Yep. Yeah. No, he looked good. He looked very good. I, mean, I was, I was actually happy to see it because they, yeah, need, I, they need a one A, one B situation. Yeah. I just look for a guy that like body language and confidence. He just looks like a really solid NHL goalie. Like they dump it in on him. He's not covering up. He's making the save and passing it to his D. He's yeah. looks like a guy that's a veteran guy that's taking charge back there. So I'm not, I'm not concerned about him one bit. Looks strong, looks confident. Body language was great. Looks like he's ready to go. So I, I, I think Ottawa, they, they, they've got, as long as both those guys stay healthy, they got one of the best tandems in the, in the Eastern Conference, in my opinion. That's two yep. very good goalies. So I think they're set. If, if they play the way they are capable of, like on paper, I, you yep. could argue it be the, maybe the best tandem outside of Boston, perhaps. Yeah, uh, I agree. So uh, who else then? of the we're not really sure if you have a spot on this team looked good for yeah. for you guys and <laughs> do you know do you know who caught my eye yeah and he didn't he didn't, he didn't. so people will have various various opi varying opinions on this guy but when you're evaluating guys that are going to make the team in a bottom six role it's who tracks hard and strips guys from the puck on the back check who finishes every hit who's relentless i liked parker kelly <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh. <laughs> all right i just i that's what 
like you got to be a guy that's running around out there fearless and like scoring goals is just a, a bonus. So I, and, and I was in and out of the game. Like I watched bits and pieces of the game. I watched most of it, but it seemed when I, when I watched him having like, I, I, when I was coaching, I always look for those little things, those little extra efforts. When a guy is chasing a guy in the back check, he catches him, strips him, puck goes the other way. Stuff like that goes a long way with a coach. And I saw, I, I was like, Kelly was doing that for me. So again, game one, but that's, uh, those are the things I'm looking for in bottom six guys. I would, I would agree that I, I thought he was, I thought he was good. Um, and I couldn't understand hey, hey, that. Good enough to make the team or just good. No one's making that. No, no one in the bottom six is, it's going to come down to the last couple games. It the, is. The, and it's going to come down. And it's and it's his job to lose because you know what you're getting with him every night, and it's going to be a hundred percent effort. It's going to be finished hits. It's, he's not going to. He's never going to wow anybody in the offensive zone, right? He's a, he's going to do it by sheer work and determination. He showed that he has that still. It was a good showing for him, whether fans like that or not. I thought well, he was fine. I thought he was fine. I don't so think that got, you're ever uh, looking for him to be. You're never looking for him to make cross ice passes which people are like you can't do that well that's not his gig his gig is to go out there kill penalties block shots track just like Gorky said and if he does those things consistently he's not coming out of that lineup right he's a, he's a coach's favorite and there's nothing wrong with that because you need those guys down the stretch no. see no. It, i agree with you but if you so if you put this on the the old twitter machine or the x machine i guess and said hey <laughs> who looked good and who didn't last night yeah. You will get everybody says everybody about everything or everything yeah. about everybody. So like well, people that are like, oh, Kelly and JBD had a tough night. Kelly's a bum. Uh, I don't think <laughs> Kelly makes the team. Waivers <laughs> candidate. <laughs> but in that, but the, like the people making the decisions see it completely different. Yeah, you're looking for different things. Like so, a, a guy that stood out, he had a couple shifts where he said, okay, he's using his big body. He's protecting the puck. He's making things happen. Almost scored a goal. Right on the doorstep where you'd figure a guy like he should. Sokolov had some moments in the games where I'm like, hey, look at this kid. Like, yeah. I like it. Like, a bounce here or there, he's got a goal. And a couple yes. good shifts in the offensive zone where he used his body. And, like, he's good and tight because as soon as he gets the puck in the offensive zone, he can shield the puck from guys and create time and space. So I, he had some moments, too. I, 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 I liked what he did. Um, and he's going to have to continue to play that way. Yeah, I liked his game too. I I'm always rooting for guys whose flippers don't work quite as well. <laughs> I, can, I can relate. I so I feel you, big guy. Um, there are a couple of shifts that he looked good. I thought he I thought he used his frame. Um, you know what I'd like to see a couple times when he went into the um, into the corners where he won the race, which he did, um, and not even won the race. He established puck first. I'd like to see him take two strides to get out of there. A couple of times I noticed him push yeah. the puck down the wall and then try to get open. And that's his game. But I, I'd like to see him let the defenseman initiate contact, give you a push in the direction, take that push. And that's where big guys with, with slower feet, that's where guys like myself, I wanted that contact because it would give me a direction to go off of. I thought he got a little stagnant with his feet on those, the contact, but on all of those, he did end up making the right play. One, he went to the point and then got back to the net, provided a great screen. So um, I think if I'm the coaching staff and I'm talking about players after the game, he's one of them saying that, you know, he asserted himself well last night and put him put himself yeah. even more on the radar. And that's what you're looking for from him. So um, kudos to him. We need to get a T-shirt, Bob, or something like the All Flippers team or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every year they do the All Hair, All Whatever. We got an All Slow Feet team. <laughs> My jersey will be hanging on that wall. <laughs> <laughs> but so he's six. What is he now? So he looks six three, six, six four. He's listed at six three. He looks bigger. He does. He's yeah. he's a yeah. uh, he's like Mark Castellick. So he's a big yeah. boy. Yeah, yeah. He he's I big. Think, that's yeah. all. That's I, all the game is now in the offensive zone. If if you can win a ten, it's all about ten foot race. If you can win a ten foot race to the puck, establish possession. The D's not allowed to hook or hold or cross check you anymore. So you, yeah, just just it takes a while too. Eh? Like that's what makes the best players in the world great. They're not scared yes. to hold on to the puck, and yep. that just comes with time. And uh, yeah, if he could if he could if he could get that going, Bob. Ooh, oh yeah, that'd be a, that would be a, that would add an element to his game. 
Yeah. Yeah. Cause he sees the rink. He knows the plays are there, but I'd like to see him draw a guy in a little, a little further out from the, you know, from the net into those areas and then make that play um, and use that separation. Like, like he can, because of his size and again, the feet are different, right. But because of his size, he can initiate that contact and spin off and get that guy on his back. So that again, that's something that just comes with time and experience. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Cleft eight was just getting to my next question, and that is uh, Josh Bailey. He's going to draw plenty of attention with 1,057 NHL games on the PTO. Was the bumper on the power play. Uh, did he do enough for either one of you to earn a spot on this roster? <laughs> okay. I like how you had, you're asking that question. It just draws off at the end. Does he know what the end Yeah. Is? He played 16 Arr. minutes. I Well, I don't know. Like, is it worth – the PTO at the expense of someone else who's kind of right there, maybe pushing for a spot or does like, is he good enough to take someone out of that lineup? No, no. Um, this, and this is the big thing when you have a young team is that you don't want a guy to come in to take somebody's spot. That is a young player that you see a future with, with the organization. He like, you call it what it is. He was brought in as an insurance policy here. He was also brought in to do a favor to a player to show that he can still play in the league. So other teams are looking. It's it's not just about the Ottawa Senators. I mean, he could sign a contract tomorrow with any team in the league because of that game. You never know, right? That's the mm -hmm. way that these things go. Um, I, I don't want to say that we should even talk about him earning a spot until his third or fourth game. Because he's going to get the benefit of the doubt as a thousand game player. Hey, I'm allowed to start slow. I've done this for 15, 16 years, whatever it is. Right. Um, and on a PTO, that might not be fair to the team, it might not be fair to the player, but he's going to get a couple more cracks at it. And I'd like to see how he does with a full li lineup around him. So I'm, I'm with I played with Bales and Juniors. I'd, I'd, uh, I'm, I'm withholding judgment till I see him with the best crew around him. Yeah, I'm just looking at. Um... Uh, yeah, so pr pr like he's a winger, right? Like he's yep. primarily plays on the wing. Yep. Um, if he was a natural centerman, like an, an, a natural yes. centerman, that would that would really make things interesting. I think yep. he's an NHL. He's definitely an NHL player. Like you, you watch him play. Yep. And we just finished describing Sokolov. Well, if you talk about Bailey, well, he's got the confidence. He knows. He knows how to create time and space and out here, especially when you're playing against a lineup that's that's a real long, young lineup like Toronto. So he's going to look good and put into a situation to have success last night, like right away on the power play where he thrives, makes really good passes. Um, so he's a guy that can settle things down. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting though because if you look at the bottom six, the way it's constructed right now for the Senators, there's there's not a lot of guys that get the puck. And are calm. Yeah. Like calm is good, especially early on in a season when you got to get off to a good start. And let's yeah. make no mistake, there is a ton of pressure on the Ottawa Senators uh, coaching staff to start. And everybody, there always is. And I, I like well, how DJ Hamlet, he's like, somebody asked him that last week. He's like, sure, yeah, there's pressure. There's always pressure. But a guy like Bailey, I wouldn't be surprised, man, if he made the team to start it off because he's a guy that can really calm things down and you know what you're going to get. Uh, it'll be dependent on injury. Um, yep. depending on what happens as camp chugs along here, usually there's nicks, there's bruises. Um, but I think there's something to be said for a guy that has experience on a younger team. Um, I don't know him as a guy, Bob, but I've never heard anything bad about him. So I'm, I'm sure he wouldn't be here if he wasn't a great room guy and a good person, which also goes a long way. So again, coaches know him, organization knows him. I wouldn't be surprised if he has a good camp to maybe earn a contract. Yeah, no, I wouldn't either. Yeah. 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 It's just, you can't coaches love having guys around that they can trust. They know what they can get. Um, and there's a lot of pressure right now. So, it, and yeah. some things will have to fall into place, but I wouldn't be surprised. I've always liked him as a player. I just, I, I like smart players that, that make plays mm -hmm. and he does that. He, he does that for sure. And has he slowed down? Sure. But let's, uh, again, let's see how it plays out in camp here. Let's see what happens. Let's see. 
who knows? Maybe some of the younger guys just make it impossible for them to even consider it. Maybe they yeah. don't. Uh, the Sens came out and outshot Toronto 24. Was it 24 7? Yeah, 24 7 after the first period. Was there any chance DJ's in that room going, guys, the owner's upstairs? I am going to do everything we can to make sure our first period is very, very good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think so. I think that he probably came in and said things about the new era and the new owner and he's in the stands and let's put a show on and gave him a little bit of a pep talk. But again, those guys were full. Like you put the guys in the lineup for game one at home. They were full of piss and vinegar. They've been off since April. They're ready to go. It's, it's a very self-motivating time of the year training camp. It's very self-motivating. So you don't need a lot. And that's the, that's the bright side of having so many young players that are excited. Um, you knew what you were going to get. Toronto had a pretty soft lineup and Ottawa just manhandled them early. That's you dress, you know, you dress your top line at home before the new owner. Um, those guys were going to put on a show because they all want to be here this year and they all want to make the playoffs. Then they managed eight shots on goal the rest of the way. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. (laughs) True. (laughs) True. All right, boy, shut her down. Yeah, Um, you're good. We're good. He's he's pumped. (laughs) He's already back on the bird. (laughs) Uh, all right, we're, we're going to move on to uh, what happened last week. But before we do that, uh, just like to take a moment, Bobby, uh, please get ready with your uh, BEI construction read while I uh, take a moment. Uh, this show always proudly presented by Botano. Go to botano.ca, uh, download the all new award winning state of the art app, the fastest, most user friendly, and advanced betting app for your mobile or tablet. Uh, lots of betting options and events, and try the same game parlays. Also, don't forget, uh, the NFL's on. They, they take a couple of wagers for that, too. Uh, live in-game betting, the most competitive odds in the market. Please play responsibly. Botano, the game starts now. Also have to switch into our partners over at BEI, Bonisher Excavating, heavy civil general, general contractor in the Ottawa Valley, helping to shape Ottawa Valley, excuse me. You can find them at BonisherExcavating.com or at 613-432-1120. When planning your next project, consider BEI for your aggregate supply needs, equipment rentals, aggregate soils, haulage floating. Do us a favor, slow down at construction zone, you animals, and uh, thank you, BEI. Uh, speaking of BEI, for 35 years, BEI has built a reputation of providing great service and unmatched quality of work. The BEI team putting forth the same commitment into building your new home. Escape the city and the big city price tags with a new subdivision called the Rent Subdivision, uh, just an hour <laughs> west of Canada. What? Detached Did 70. You, you just say it's a nude subdivision? What about that? <laughs> That's what yeah. I heard. And, oh, no. You know what? See, the problem is you don't pay attention and read the script. I'm paying attention. I, Detached homes, 70-foot frontage, uh, water and sewer. They're also semi-detached homes. Plenty of affordable options and floor plans. Prices starting low is $500,000. Go to bonisherhomes.com. So, Wally, I, I heard the rumors about Stittsville, eh, Bob? There oh, used to be a rumor in Stittsville if the garage was half up. Then, yeah. Uh, come on in. So, <laughs> I, you know that... I, uh, I just I had my door broken. That was all that happened. <laughs> It happened to us, man. <laughs> Nobody told us a thing until uh, and we lived out the other way, so it wasn't a big deal. But the, the door got stuck, like, I, I mean, this far from the ground. And then uh, we said, hell with it. We'll use the other garage and I'll park outside because we didn't feel like getting it fixed right away. Finally, somebody told me that. And I was like, our garage has been half slanted for <laughs> three and a half weeks. But luckily, we lived remote enough. But, well, you should have seen me that night trying to pull it down. Yeah. I'm like, I'm on the road too much. I don't know. <laughs> What's like, going on on the wall? Of this thing, but I'm on a 10-day road trip, we'll have this thing half open. No dice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everybody thinks Wally's this organized guy and he's grouchy. <laughs> but, man, when that garage is half open... <laughs> <laughs> it, by the way, it's spotless. I will say the garage is spotless. Uh, all right, moving on to uh, something that Yorkie was in attendance for on Friday. The Sens officially welcomed the new owner. The game, he cares about the game, he's passionate about the game, and that's why I couldn't be more excited about the future of this franchise. And so we are all delighted excited to welcome you and your group to the NHL. This is going to be terrific, so welcome. That's been a long road, but I must tell you it's been worth the journey. Uh, I can really say I'm finally home. 
Um, it's, it's emotional. Thank you. On the ice, it's all about having a winning team. That's, that's, it's a, it's a, you know, with the goal of bringing home a Stanley Cup. Uh, plain and simple. Uh, together. And I say together. We will make the city proud. And let's bring the cup back to Ottawa. Go Stens Cup. So Michael Landlauer, the new owner of the Ottawa Senators, along with uh, a consortium, if you will, also your brother, Jeff York, is involved. Uh, Rocco Tulio. There's a... Uh, and the Claridge family, the Maholters, I should say, uh, lots of people involved in this. It's exciting to finally have it done. I thought, Ann Lauer, New York, you were there. I thought he did a phenomenal job. Uh, and he's just as simple as it is. He just wants to win a hockey game. And he had a, he had a great quote that, I, that, that uh, really got highlighted when he talked about the team. He goes, I, I'm the owner. But he goes, but the, but the team truly belongs to the fans, which I thought, man, that was a really – never heard that before in the last little while here but saying that he just struck me number one very intelligent very humble very yes. humble very aware and um that was great i know i was there listening to the whole thing he it was a home run just hit it out of the park and uh um then hung around after um actually got a chance to talk to him meet him just a great person uh great guy this this truly is, and I, I've been saying this for a long time. This is a very exciting time for the franchise to have a person like this um, be in charge of the Ottawa Senators. Like it's uh, it's going to be exciting. But he's going to he's going to like one of the things he said during his press conference as well was somebody asked him what's what's your plan now to win, and he's like, well, I'm I'm going to observe. I'm going to continue to continue to observe and and watch. And he's he's very calculated and. And take his time and 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 making the right moves, the right decisions, and um, you know it's it's uh, I was I was really impressed, and a lot and a lot of major players in the city, as you mentioned, some of them Wally there in attendance, um, just so many good people surrounding him that are going to make this ownership group so good for the city. It's uh, it truly is exciting. Does it matter to the players? Does what matter? Well, Bob, you've played. A lot uh, more recent than I have. What do you think? No, um, I I think what matters to the players is that they're not answering questions about it day in and day out. Yeah. Um, and it's not something that's every time you come in, Brian Morris or Chris Morris are going to have to say, "Hey, they're you know this is what's happening outside the team uh, and the room." They might ask you to weigh in on it. There, that part will be a relief for the players doesn't matter to them who owns the team. The paychecks are the paychecks. They're there to win. They're, they're, they're there to not answer questions about anything that has to do with what, what's on the ice. So yep. that part doesn't matter. The interviews matter. Um, the fluidity matters. And the fact that every day they're going to come to the rank, they know who's in charge. They know, you know, that kind of stuff. You don't have to worry about, like, you remember, because you were there, uh, Wally, the one year when everything was being blown up. I loved Eugene, but you never knew what he was going to say the night before. <laughs> so, and if he did, you'd come in and go, oh, Wally's going to come in and he's going to have his hair quaffed and the oil on the face. And he's going to ask about this immediately. <laughs> so um, yeah. it's going to be nice to not have those distractions for the players. That's the big, big takeaway. But I, I agree with York. Uh, I heard more of the tidbits and more of the snapshots of the quotes and I thought he nailed it. Um and, he, and he's going to bring him and his group are going to bring something the team haven't had in a little bit. And that's some serious stability. So it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I, I remember when I first came to the league, I played for Detroit and at the time it was still owned by the Lich family, but, but like when you have a really good owner, you're appreciative because you, you get things like you just, everything's there at your, you know, at your, right. uh, whatever. And, and you, you have and the you, best you just, of anything. You have yep. the best of everything. And not that most teams, if you go into any NHL locker room right now, most teams do. Yeah. <laughs> With the exception, you hear the rumors about Calgary's. <laughs> who, was yeah. it who was it that was talking about Calgary's uh, room? I forget the player. I think it was Mackenzie Weger. <laughs> said something about the room when he got there. Um, yeah, we could use a new rink here or a new room. Yes. But uh, yeah, Ottawa's already, they like the room is great right now. Um, they got everything you need. But yeah, I just. When you know when you know a really good person owns the team, and he also too during the press conference, other thing he said, it's 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 all about winning. 
And and you yeah. go back to when this team was uh, when you had Snoop Dogg and the weekend and Ron Reynolds. People said, oh, it's going to be great. Ottawa's going to have, they're going to do this. There's going to be concerts and there's going to be a reality show. And I was always of the opinion, at the end of the day, and especially in a Canadian city, it's about winning. Like, yeah. who, it's, who cares if you have a show about the team or whatever? Like, that's great. But if you're not winning, everyone's pissed off. So it is about winning. And that he made that crystal clear um, that his number one priority is to bring a, a cup here. And, and I, I believe him. So uh, I don't think this gets uh, talked about enough is Cyril Leader. Uh, he so at the press conference it was announced Sarah Leader back as CEO and president. Uh, by the way, it was six years ago, almost to the month that he was fired. It was August of 2017. He's a guy that's a day one guy, right? Part of the founding group. It just makes everything feel right with this organization. And I, I don't know what it's like for you guys, but for someone on the outside that was always having to go to if you needed something to a president or whatever, he was always very good, very willing, and he's always in tune with what's going on in the city. I just think this, this decision is huge. And I don't know that people understand exactly that. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess as a player, I didn't have the same understanding as somebody that, um, that you might've in, in the organization. Yeah. Right. Um, I'll tell you that I, the, the year that I went to Columbus for the all-star game, um, I had gotten a plane down and said, why don't you guys just hop on with me so that you're not, you know, Columbus is a hard enough place to get to. So let's just not have anybody fly commercial. I'll get a big enough one that we can all hop on. And uh, I spent some time on the flight with him and his wife coming home and they were, um, that was the most, I think I had ever talked to him, you know, one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two, -on -two, I guess with, with my wife and him and, uh, and the Hoffman's flying with us. And I just, uh, I came away thinking, and, and I had, you know, interactions with them, but I came away thinking what a, what a, very, very enlightened, smart, humble, um, and just kind family they were. And I don't know if that's the same as everybody else's experience, but it was mine. Um, yes. And I, I really enjoyed my time around them. Yeah. So I I knew Cyril when I played, and then I knew him when I was done. And, and being from here, uh, being up in the box when he's watching a game too, like he, he is first and foremost, he's a fan of the game. He's a fan of the team, cares about the team. And when he was let go, well, you remember this people in this city were very upset. There was a lot of anger and there was a lot of mistrust towards the Ottawa senators. And I truly believe a generation of fans were lost. Um, and when moves like that were made, you just, lots of people, especially in the business community, we're driven away from the Ottawa Senators. I mm -hmm. I have friends in business that own businesses that had season tickets that just stopped buying tickets. They said, we're not going to come anymore. So I think first and foremost, this move, you're bringing in a guy that's a very smart guy. He knows the market. He's competent. But you're also regaining the trust within the community and more importantly, the business community. Ottawa is a very small city. Everybody knows everybody. And this move, I just think it's so smart because... Like I said, he knows how to do the job. And more importantly, he's an Ottawa guy that people mm -hmm. really like and trust in the community. So it's regaining the trust of fans, business people, and it's just going to help the brand. It was, uh, and he did it very quickly during the press conference and even the people in, in attendance there. It's just, it is such a smart, good move. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, I was, it was a great decision. I will admit I'm a little disappointed because I've been trying for about a year to get Myers, uh, where he was with the general manager, to be a sponsor of the show. And now <laughs> he's he's gone and I got to start over. So uh, yeah. we'll see, see if we can fix something up here later. Um, <laughs> so and the other thing is we are expecting other moves to be made. And we know Alfie's in attendance and he said how much he respects and wants Alfie part, I think, of the organization. Yeah. We will wait to see how that plays out. But as of right now, uh, expect there to be some patience as we get going. Also, don't forget, uh, Cyril was part of the the bid that won the LeBreton Flats yeah. deal. Uh, so he, he understands the whole development process of how to get that deal done. So that's another huge part. Yeah, with Cyril and Jeff Pablo and his team back yeah. then, they they did a lot of great. Like they won that yeah. bid, and then he was oh, yeah. how he was let. How soon after that was he let go, Wally? It I wasn't... feel like it was a year. Like yeah. I think that was 2016 and he was like going 2017, something like that. 
Could you imagine, though, if the deal went the other way? Like, what would have happened? Where would LeBreton Flats be right now? Like, Cyril did Cyril did too good of a job, but he won it for the Sands. <laughs> and, and, and then they ended yeah. up with ended up letting him go and that pissed a lot of people off well he's the but don't forget he's the one that went out and did we hurried up did the press conference to try to get a donor uh to match the liver donor right and so and it wasn't long after that that he was it's he was just that was a huge problem i i I, the end of the day like it's time to turn the page on everything and and what's in the past is the past but you know it, it I think a wrong is a wrong is being righted in bringing yep. Sarah Leader back. If if you want to put things in black and white terms here, you're 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 making a you're making a decision that was wrong before and bringing back a, a quality person. Yes, so that's that's huge. Anyway, um, it's great to see how the this is turning around and how things are now shaping up. Uh, finally, I know we we got to get to something here because I promise everybody there's two things. In fact, we're gonna go to the picture first, um, Gavin. So Morgan Wallen was the concert in town on Thursday night, which all the players were seemed to attend to. Uh, then there was they got backstage, and then all the guys were in the room. You, you just take a look at Brady Kachuk's arm and tell me he's not a man child. That he's thing a is unit. like a python. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big dude. Look at isn't that it? arm. Uh, I got to text Josh about that hat like immediately. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> the Gilligan yeah. hat. Yeah, let's say like a free bowl of soup. <laughs> That's a tough hat, but yes, Brady is. I mean, he, he's been in a unit since he was eighteen. Yeah. You know what's scary is he's just now coming into his his adult body. <laughs> Twenty four. Yes. He's gonna. I can't wait to see him in playoffs, like Gerke is always saying. But uh, he's gonna crush people. He's well, a yeah, unit. Been, but, yeah. yeah. Did you see him? Wants to go near him. <laughs> you see him in front of the net. You see him in front of the net last night in the game. He yeah. just. He basically just. You know. He. Puts a tent down, gets a bonfire going. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> camp out. I'm gonna camp out here, and uh, and you're not moving me. They can't. They don't even bother yeah. with them because if no. you go in there, it's a double screen. You yep. can't move That's the so guy. True. Just leave him. <laughs> so, Just leave him. I, he's gonna score a couple of goals. Nobody wants to get involved in that, and I don't blame him one bit. <laughs> well, the, uh, can you put the picture back up? And the reason that did you see? Hold on, let's see. Drake Batherson. His shirt uh, on the other side looks like he's ready for Florida retirement. Yeah. If there's one yeah. guy that's going to be at the golf course in the the uh, retirement residence, it looks like it's Drake Batherson. Yeah, that's kind of tough. I there might be two <laughs> texts sent out here in a minute. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's like you, you found that at Tommy Bahama. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Robert Graham shirt. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, God love him. All right. <laughs> Uh, I need to move on quickly, and that is Shane Pinto situation. So uh, before we get into it, we'll tell you about the tweet that was sent out. I think it was Saturday um, that basically Ottawa, if they're looking to try and make a move to trade Matthew Joseph, uh, then they're going to have to basically tr- give up a first and a something. That's what they're. That's what people are looking for. Uh, boy, is anybody... Like, are either one of you two fine gentlemen going to trade a first round pick to clear up space in order to get Shane Pinto signed? I don't think so. It's a big ask, man. Um, But that's, you know, when you're in that position, teams know they have the leverage. So that's what the ask is going to be. It doesn't mean you settle there, but giving up a first to, to get a third line center, whether he can score 20 or not, seems like a lot. Um, mm-hmm. I just don't know that it's the right deal. But that being said, if you think about it, the core is here. Um, so you can, you can be a little less rigid with your picks because you have all the players and you don't want to give up a first round pick. I get that, but everybody's here. Everybody's on long-term contracts. You can probably part with one to get it in the grand scheme of things. I just, I don't, yep. I, I don't, if I'm sitting in the GM's chair, that's a hard ask for me to get rid of, but you got three years at 2.95 off. <sighs> You'd have to really, really sit, sit on that one. Um, but I don't think I would do it. I mean, now I will throw out <clears throat> what Tyler Boucher is a first round pick for instance, or yeah, JBD's he's a mm-hmm. second, right. I, mm-hmm. But high end 
is that maybe enough to swing it? But boy, I still don't want to have to give up those assets. But New you're Jared painted Chip. in the corner now. You have no choice to yeah. get Shane Pinto in here. You've got to move some contracts. And I don't think they want to move Dominic Kubelik at all. And I know people have brought up that name. No, I think, no, no, I think no. the organization wants him in the lineup. He's only making two million, right? He's making two million. Yeah. It's on a yeah. one year deal. You just traded to Brinkett. He was the central piece besides the, yeah. the conditional first round or whatever it's going to be, Boston's pick or Detroit's. I like Kubelik for <laughs> talking to some. I was just down in London last week and talking to a lot of people that watched him closely last year, some of my buddies in Windsor. They like him. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm not going to pretend I watched Kubelik play every game last year, but I, from what I've heard, will be a perfect third line player for the Ottawa Senators at a great yes. price on a one year deal. So I, I don't think you move him. I want to see how camp plays out and to see how Tyler Clevin does. Is he ready to start the season with the Ottawa Senators? Can he, does he need some seasoning? Uh, see how Jacob Bernard Docker does. You got Hamannick and you have Branstrom making, what's Branstrom at 2 million? Yeah. Hamannick's uh, just around there too, 1.5. It's going to be tough. I Man, you just gave up Nick Paul. You got Joseph back. I know you don't win all your trades, but I'd like to see Joseph play a little bit and maybe get his value up, especially if Ottawa gets off to a great start and Joseph's an integral, like a good player for you. Maybe too hard to move him right now. I just looked at his stats. I had no idea. He only had three goals last year. Okay. I like, I remember watch and to be fair to Joseph, he had a stint last year when he was playing with Shane Pinto and Tyler Mott, where I thought he was in a great role. He was he yep. was using his speed, creating offense, and then when that line broke up, I just he didn't really have an identity on the team. And he just yeah. was a guy, he was just a guy that kind of skated fast. But I th I think there's more there. I, I, I would hate to give up a first rounder to, to just to get rid of him. It'd yeah. be nice if we could make a package deal. Maybe you throw in somebody and get something in return. Maybe it's not that much, but right. don't, don't give up a draft pick. Don't give up a first round pick. That's hard. It's a, it's a big ask. Uh, just for uh, shits and giggles, I went through on uh, dailyfaceoff.com and went through all the third line centers they have currently listed. The average of all of them, uh, which includes William Nylander now moving to third line center, which obviously when you have 87 points last season and 40 goals, isn't a third line center. Um, the average is 14 goals and 37 points, and Pinto is 20 goals, 35 points. So he's right in there. But the three guys I thought were comparables, um, Noah Cates in Philly, which is uh, – he's 24, had 36 points. He just signed a deal two years, I think it was, at 2.625 a year. Um, Edmonton's Ryan McLeod, 11 goals, 23 points. Again, he's 24. He had two point – he's 2.1 mil. And then Cody Glass is very similar to me, if you will. 24, 35 points, 14 goals. He makes 2.5 million. I mm -hmm. think it's 2.5 is the number, but I'm yeah. because he doesn't have any leverage, maybe he comes in at 2.1, 2.2, but then it's only a two year deal, right? And then he wants to get paid. Yeah. It's just, it, <laughs> yeah. It's a tough ass, too, because Cody Glass is able to sign 2.5 in a tax free spot. So it's like making 2.8. Players know that. Right. He also had 14 goals. It's I know it's six goals less, but goals are the premium in the league. You score, you get paid. And he scored yes. 20 goals as a guy that played how many minutes a game? A lot less than a lot of players um, when you really break it down. So he knows his worth, but he also has no leverage. It's <laughs> Both sides think they're in the winning position here. I'd like <laughs> to see some. And, and, you know, if you're asking Shane Pinto if 2.2 is enough, he's saying no. Um, but he might have to cave on that at this point. You know, he might have yeah. to cave on that. If you want to play and you want to get paid down the road, you got to take a little off the top, right? Uh, so some maybe, guys... maybe, maybe just pick up the phone and call Tampa. You know, we were just kidding. You want you guys take him back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, we want our mulligan. <laughs> Can I have a mulligan on that shot? <laughs> the, I guess the interesting part is. If you are Shane Pinto, right, you're young, um, yeah. 22 years old. You're, it's really your first con big contract negotiation because the other one's the entry level. Are you getting antsy? Are you yeah, going to, are they thinking you might just cave and go, I'll sign the deal? I just want to get into camp and get going here. Well, that's, he is. All that, that's what it is right now, Bob. It's, it's, 
this they're going to test you. They're going to yep. test you to see how many times you're going to call your agent and say, I just want to sign. I just want to sign. There's, there's no breaking point yet. No regular season games have been missed yet. There's no, there's no pressure point yet. The, the first, the, the first uh, date has come and gone, the start of camp. The next pressure point will be um, the start of the regular season. Do we get to that? We'll see, but that'll be the, the first like real pressure point because a lot of guys have missed camp before Brady did it. And uh, so, yeah, we'll see. Like I, I mean, Alfie did okay. Alfie held up, but he was okay. Yeah. 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 I, I missed camp one year when I was, I was in Nashville. I was 30. This was 2003. I was 33. I was awful when I got back. I was so slow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, day one, Bob, day one at training camp. So for people that aren't familiar with NHL training camps, you get in, they, they put you through every single test. And as a player, you're deciding which little uh, shop you're going to stop at first. Am I going to do the, am I going to pee in the cup first? Am I going to get some blood taken? Yep. And I said, you know what? I'm going to start off easy. I'm going to go to the eye test first. So you basically go on the table and they dilate your pupils to check your eyes. This is the very first thing I did at camp. Eye doctor dilates my pupils and he goes, you got a torn retina. And I'm like, shut up. I don't have a torn retina. He goes, yeah, you have a torn retina. You got to have surgery right away. And I, I thought he was joking. So I basically first test at camp, got off the table, went right to the hospital and had eye surgery. No and, I, and I missed all of camp. I came back. I played no exhibition games. And I started the first game of the season with two practices. And I was, ooh, I was rusty. Trotsy, <laughs> Trotsy comes to me like three weeks later. He's like, are you going to get going here? I'm like, That's yes, amazing. okay, it's coming, it's coming. I'm like, give me a, give me a mully here. I missed all the camp. I got the full cage on now. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So I've, have you missed? Like when you miss camp, it depends. Everyone's different, but you're, you're generally you're gonna be behind though. You're gonna be behind, but it's just, it was just crazy, man. I'm like, friggin' eye test. I had no That's idea. How I, to this, to this day, I still have no idea how I tore my retina. How long it could have been torn, or it was just weird. <laughs> Uh, how how long do you guys want camp to be? My my, I guess my question is: you start in day one, which Bobby you called the longest day of the season, uh, when you're doing all the medicals and stuff. If you camp could be a certain number of days, what would it be? I so Yorkie's probably been through this. Coming back from the lockout, we had five days, no exhibition games, right in. That's not enough. Three weeks is too long. I would like to see. I like the 10 to 12 day mark where you make your cuts halfway through and then you get to your number and then you get to your two rosters with. I think I think we play too many exhibition games. I think four to five should be the number um, that way each player gets, you know, and if guys need a little extra, you throw them in for that third or fourth game. We played play six to eight is too many. So I'll say I'll say two weeks with your exhibition games tied in uh, to those two weeks. And you play and you play four games in a week so that guys can get that night off or whatever. So most players are playing three games in a week, like a regular season schedule, and then drop mm -hmm. the puck. Yeah. Bobby, it's, or it's, sorry, Yorkie, <clears throat> you would have had about a month, if I'm not mistaken. Like camps back oh. in the days were well, forever. When was, I for, Jason Spets was playing hmm. nine, seven and nine uh preseason games at one point. Well, that's, that's why the that's why the three hour rule came into effect, which is basically you're only allowed now to be at the rink for three hours, and that's when you arrive, when you leave. Because when I first came into the league, they were just keeping guys there all day and just hammering guys. But times have changed. Now guys come to camp in great shape. Um, yeah. You come ready. to you, Training camp isn't used to get in shape. So, I don't know. You look at the NFL. A quarterback plays like a quarter, and he's ready to go for the season. Like So, I yeah, I, it's a little too long. Cut it down a bit. I would say what Bob's right on the money there. Yeah. Uh, four or five games. Let's get it. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, before we go, Bob, I just want to point out, I would not come in and ask you those questions right away. I would ask you some softball question. Oh, I know. To, just yeah. to ease into it. Yeah. Then I would get the one the throwaway question about whatever. And then yeah. we get to the questions. No, we know. I know your patterns, bud. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I kept all my notes. <laughs> but at least, at least you knew what it was coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I was always aware. Yeah. I would always say to you, though, if it was anything touchy, I'd be like, I need to ask you this question. You were uh, good about it. There was a few right, that so, Yeah, I would never try to hammer you right off the bat. But anyway, 
Uh, boys, we are back Thursday, a live show. The Sens play tonight, 7 p.m. on Sportsnet. So watch that. We will uh, break it down again and uh, keep you up to date on all things Sens related. Uh, see you on Thursday. Take care, everybody. See you, everybody. See you, fellas. Coming in hot is brought to you by Botano.ca. Please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to never miss an episode.